Hello friends, welcome to Word of God Fridays. Today we're reading in the Book of Romans again in the NIV. We're only reading one chapter, chapter 14, and it only has 23 verses. So I'm gonna be able to really make some, uh, I guess, good applications and dig a little bit deeper into this, which I think is important to do, in particular in this little section, to give us some look at the context. All right, so let's just begin. Word of God Fridays, Romans chapter 14 in the NIV. Accept the one whose faith is weak, without quarreling over disputable matters. One person's faith, faith allows them to eat anything, but another whose faith is weak eats only vegetables. The one who eats everything must not treat with contempt the one who does not, and the one who does not eat everything must not judge the one who does, for God has accepted them. Who are you to judge someone else's servant? To their own master, servants stand or fall, and they will stand, for the Lord is able to make them stand. One person considers one day more sacred than another. Another considers every day alike. Each of them should be fully convinced in their own mind. Yeah, in their own mind. Whoever regards one day as special does so to the Lord. Whoever eats meat does so to the Lord, for they give thanks to God. Whoever abstains does so to the Lord and gives thanks to God. For none of us lives for ourselves alone, and none of us dies for ourselves alone. If we live, we live for the Lord, and if we die, we die for the Lord. So whether we live or die, we belong to the Lord. For this very reason, Christ died and returned to life, so that he might be the Lord of both the dead and the living. You then, why do you judge your brother or sister? Or why do you treat them with contempt? For we will all stand before God's judgment seat, it is written, as surely as I live, says the Lord, every knee will bow before me, every tongue will acknowledge God. So then, each of us will give an account of ourselves to God. Therefore, let us stop passing judgment on one another. Instead, make up your mind not to put any stumbling block or obstacle in the way of a brother or sister. I am convinced, being fully persuaded in the Lord, that nothing is unclean in itself. But if anyone regards something as unclean, then for that person, it is unclean. If your brother or sister is distressed because of what you eat, you are no longer acting in love. Do not by your eating destroy someone for whom Christ died. Therefore, do not let what you know is good be spoken of as evil. For the kingdom of God is not a matter of eating and drinking, but of righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit, because anyone who serves Christ in this way is pleasing to God and receives human approval. Let us therefore make every effort to do what leads to peace and to mutual edification. Do not destroy the work of God for the sake of food. All food is clean, but it is wrong for a person to eat anything that causes someone else to stumble. It is better not to eat meat or drink wine or to do anything else that will cause your brother or sister to fall. So whatever you believe about these things, keep between yourself and God. Blessed is the one who does not condemn himself by what he approves. But whoever has doubts is condemned if they eat, because their eating is not from faith, and everything that does not come from faith is sin. Romans chapter 14 in the NIV. There is a lot going on in here talking about the weak and the strong, uh, but there is definitely two two things I want to sort of hone in on, which first of all uh, is talking about the fact that as um, we look at this, it's clear that we're talking about people in the, the kingdom. So these are people that have uh, become children of God, okay? And we're looking at those that have faith, that is weak or faith that is uh, strong. Now, he's talking about food. He's talking about um, days, okay? Now, these were disputes that they had uh, back then, and I think that we can look at this in the same light, uh, especially when it says someone who eats only vegetables, and we have those today. So here's the thing that's going on. We are placing judgment on people based on what they eat or drink, and whether or not they see a, this day or that day as sacred. Um, we could talk about even just saying, do you celebrate Christmas, birthdays, those kinds of things. Those are still things that we are dealing with now. So I think this is extremely applicable because he also goes into talking about judgment. Now, let's just 
consider for a moment that Romans is written by Paul and and some of the things he discusses here about judgment and and also submitting to another so that you are not causing someone to stumble are things that Paul talks about repeatedly actually and the the place that I always go to when I'm thinking about this is because this theme of of not causing someone to stumble by what you eat or drink or by a day that you see as more sacred as another um, he very clearly says to not um, pass judgment and then sort of says here that we need to make every effort to live in peace and and to have mutual advocations that we're not causing others to stumble and so uh, we look back and into well we look forward actually into the letter he wrote to the Corinthians and he writes about this a lot actually here in uh, the end of 1 Corinthians 5 and 1 Corinthians 8, 9, and 10. There's a lot of talk about food um, and your rights as a believer, your freedoms as a believer, I should say, not rights, um, because it's all about the freedom that you have in the Holy Spirit um, and in the maturity that the Holy Spirit and the gifts that the Holy Spirit gives you and how we cannot apply what the Holy Spirit has given us freedom to someone else because that is to us, um, which is where he's saying we should not be passing judgment. And I wanna make a distinction because we often think, oh, here he's saying, uh, do not pass judgment. But what he's saying is that we should not pass judgment on someone based on these disputable matters, okay? So when I feel that I have freedom to eat and drink whatever, because I don't have addiction, addictions to any of these things, that is for me. But if I'm around someone that I am causing them to stumble because I am doing that and, and it's affecting them and their relationship with Christ because of that, then as a mature believer, I should not do that. And I also should not pass judgment on them because they don't have the same freedom. And I should not be judged because of the freedom that the Lord has given me. So this is a, a, a it's a big circle of how we as believers are to be submitting to Christ and not passing judgment on people for the freedoms that we have in the Lord. This is not to say that we should not judge because you go also to Corinthians chapter five and let's look at verse 12 and 13, okay? It says this very clearly. What business is of it of mine to judge those outside the church? So if I'm a Christian and I am judging non-believers for behavior that I as a believer would not partake in because I am trying to imitate Christ as his servant, then that's inappropriate because I am placing judgment on them that, well, they aren't born again. So I'm, I'm expecting them to behave in a way that they have not been born again. They wouldn't be able to do so. I can't even do it without the power of the Holy Spirit within me. So that's verse 12, where it says, what business of it is it of mine to judge those outside the church? Are you not to judge those inside? So then he talks about how Yes, we are to judge those within the family of God, the children of God. We are to hold each other accountable. So he says this, God will judge those outside. Expel the wicked person from among you. Now that is a direct reference to Deuteronomy where that phrase is said seven times. You can look it up. It's in Deuteronomy chapter 13, 17, 19, 21, 22, 24 because it's talking about in order for the children of God to be able to follow the Lord appropriately and not have stumbling blocks among us that may cause us to walk in sin, we need to not have that among us. Now, let's also be clear because Jesus addresses judgment as well in Matthew chapter seven. So if we look at Matthew chapter seven, let's see what Jesus says there. Uh, because people, take this out of context as well and think that Jesus is telling us not to judge. But what he's actually telling us is to judge wisely, okay? He says, do not judge or you too will be judged. For in the same way you judge others, you will be judged. And with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. Why do you look at the speck of sawdust in your brother's eye and pay no attention to the plank in your own? How can you say to your brother, let me take the speck out of your eye when all the time there is a plank in your own eye. You hypocrite, first take the plank out of your eye and then, okay, so now there's an end then, you will see clearly to remove the speck from your brother's eye. So there is, okay, 
Apply the measure of judgment to yourself. Bring it to the Lord. Sorry, there's a fly buzzing around. Deal with it appropriately. Repent. Come humbly to your brother who is struggling with the same thing possibly as you. And then you can be free to say, okay, I'm going to help you remove this plank. That is judgment right there, but it's rightly applied. Secondly, he also says this at the end. Do not give dogs what is sacred. Do not throw your pearls to pigs. If you do, they may trample them under their feet and turn and tear you to pieces. So you do not come to someone who is not willing to submit to any kind of accountability under church authority, under Christian brotherly, sisterly love with these kinds of things, because it's not appropriate. I would say this would also go to what Paul is saying in Corinthians when he says, we are not to judge those outside of the family of God, okay? Because that's not appropriate. Um, and I would also say that if you don't have a relationship with someone, you probably shouldn't be coming up to them and pointing your finger because there's no relational way of you to deal with their sin and your sin at the same time. Um, and this is complicated because there is submission involved and it goes back to hear what Paul is saying in Romans chapter 14, where we began, when it says, let us therefore make every effort to do what leads to peace and mutual edification and do not destroy the work of God for the sake of food. And, and it goes on. So, you know, that we need to be loving and we cannot go forward in these things without having relationship. I like how he puts it at the end that whatever you believe about these things, whatever we're talking about, whatever divisions there are among the church in terms of our freedom in Christ, it says, keep them between yourself and God. Blessed is the one who does not condemn himself by what he approves. And then says that if you're, if you have doubt and you can't do something in faith, then if you do it, you are sinning. It may not be so for the other person, but you are. And this is where the idea that we must follow our con conscience because our conscience is informed by God. It's the way that God speaks to each person is through your conscience. This is why we, this is why when the state, dare I say this, that interferes with someone's personal conscience and, and doubts and feelings. And this is a very slippery slope because now we start going into the, the heart of someone's faith, someone's decision making, and that has to be between the person and the Lord, and they need to know that their conscience is being respected. So uh, this chapter to me is amazing. I love it because it, it's actually very deep, and I hope what you noticed I did here was I'm reading Paul's words, so I go back and I reference more of his words and his writing to expound upon what he writes in this chapter, and then of course we should always compare um, what does Jesus say about it? Because Paul is never talking in a vacuum. And Jesus does address this in the Sermon on the Mount. That's what I was reading in Matthew chapter 7. Um, it's important that as we read scripture, we let scripture interpret scripture. And it's also great to see how we can take the later revelations that are in the New Testament to help us understand the Old Testament and put it into the perspective of the gospel because that is the story of scripture. It is the story of salvation for the people, for the world that God loves, which I learned this week in a sermon. We um, had a, our pastor preach on basically the first, for God so loved the world, first six words in John three sixteen, And he loved the world, even though the world doesn't love him back. It's amazing. And so when you look at scripture from that lens, it's, um, you can see, you can see much better. And I pray that the Holy Spirit helped you to understand Romans chapter 14 today. Uh, Word of God Fridays. Have a blessed Friday and a blessed weekend.